This week on Ignition, the BMW M6 is fast like a speeding bullet, but heavy like the Man of Steel. So here is the M6 convertible. It uses the same 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 as the M5. It also makes the same power and uses the same 7 speed twin clutch transmission. It gets the same suspension setup with the rear subframe bolted directly to the body and it uses the same latest bits of technology including a round view cameras and an automatic stop start. So you have to wonder, with all this hardware borrowed from the M5, can the M6 be just as fast? You also get the same launch control that you get in the M5, as clunky and unwieldy as it is. Uh, to use it, you turn off stability control by pressing and holding this button here until you see DSC inactive. Then you put the shifter in manual mode by moving it over to the right. Make sure it's on the harshest shift setting. Uh, now you're ready for launch control if the guy next to you hasn't left the line yet, which he might have. Uh, to use it, lightly tap the brake with your left foot. You don't want to slam it, just like graze it with your left foot. And then you push the shifter forward. Once you see a checkered flag appear on the dash, then you go flat on the gas. And from at that point, while the engine's revving, you can choose the revs with the cruise control. You can change it by 100 RPM increments. That's all kind of tedious and insane, let's face it. The easiest way to do it is just to launch when the car says it's good to go. Gets you out of the hole with a little bit of wheel spin, chirps in a second, 0 to 60, 3.9 seconds. And the quarter mile arrives just over 12 seconds. It's a couple tenths slower than the M5, but still a respectable performance for a car that weighs 4,500 pounds. And now for our 60 to 0 braking test. We're on the steel rotors, but you can actually get carbon ceramic uh, rotors as an upgrade. Let's see what these steel ones can do. Well, our best stop from 60 was 105 feet. As we begin the figure 8 test in the M6, there's a tendency when you start for the car to push as you enter a corner. That tendency changes though as the tires heat up. It's interesting, the car has two very different handling characteristics depending on the heat of the tires. When they're cold, they push. When they warm up, the whole car becomes this oversteering machine. The rest of the car, though, is capable, if not the most exciting. You have to be very careful with throttle on corner exit or else you get in these big sideways movements, which are fun, but not fast. This car definitely has high limits. It put down a very good lap time, and it seemed to take well to extended periods of aggressive driving, even big sideways whoopsies like that. Not completely in love with it, though. I can respect it, but I don't desire it. So, the M6, I don't know what it is about the Germans, but lately all it seems they want to do is just make their own interpretation of the Chevy Corvette. And that's what this feels like with that massive long hood and that twin turbo V8 underneath it. That engine, by the way, just makes incredible power delivery. You have 500 pound-feet of torque from 1500 RPM all the way to 5750 RPM, where at that point, peak power comes in, you have 560 horsepower until 7,000 RPM. And when you finally find a straight where you can give it the go, that power just is unrelenting. Oh. <laughs> in terms of handling, the M6 isn't a car that likes to be driven hard down a mountain road. It's much more adept at being guided by smooth hands. That may seem at odd with the M part of the M6 name, but that's where we're at with modern BMWs. And I tell you what, you can enjoy it a lot more if you just drive smoothly. This is a talkative steering wheel. It's telling you a lot more. It might be even a little bit more communicative than it was in the M5, 
before I forget, this is the new M steering wheel. And there's not much to complain about with it. It works just fine, nice thick bolstering, and it gives you a great feel of the road. Shift paddles work well. The font on the digital gauges looks a little bit oversized. I mean, it's easy to see, but it's kind of like looking at your grandparents' computer screen. Everything is plus size, so you can't miss it no matter what. You know, something we seldom touch on this show is comfort, because we're always driving crazy fast sports cars. But I'm really impressed at how smoothly and comfortably this M6 goes down a road. And again, that's something that's also at odds with the M name, but here we are. This is an incredibly capable performance car that can go down a road quite nicely. You don't feel that hard edge of performance as you're going down the freeway on the commute. This is comfortable in a ways that you'd never expect from a 560 horsepower sports convertible. It's like the M5 in that regard. I'd have a tough time choosing this over an M5 because the only logic that really gets you there is you just want a car without a roof. Well, if you want a sports car without a roof for a little bit over $100,000, kind of might make sense to get a 911 Cabriolet. The M6 is a tough car to place in the automotive landscape. I mean, you can respect it, sure. It's a 4,500 pound car that goes like stink and rides very comfortably when you want it to. But while you can respect it, it's a hard car to desire. Yes, it's big, and yes, it's heavy. And here's the part where I would normally say but and give some reason why I don't mind, yet I don't have anything. The M6 excels as an engineering exercise. Making a car that's incredibly heavy as well as incredibly fast is a remarkable feat. And while it's easy to respect the M6's capabilities, it's difficult to get excited about another 4,500 pound sports car. You only get a set number of launches uh, and before you have to drive the car a certain distance. How many launches that is, what the distance is you have to drive, BMW doesn't really tell you. So that means in between runs you have to drive up and down the drag strip in order to get launch control back. Smooth move. 